So, in all the news at the moment, even though I don't actually watch the news anymore, there's the big thing about a scary flu pandemic that's hitting the UK, supposedly, the Australian flu. And apparently this is just a flu Australia had like six months ago when it was there, technically winter then, which would have been our summer, and it was a particularly nasty strain of flu, and now it's here, and apparently it's spreading like wildfire. How much of this is true I don't know, because as I said, the media likes to over-sensationalise any, everything, anything and everything, which is one of the reasons I don't watch the news anymore, because I can't really take it seriously. Um, but let's just say it's true what they're saying, and there's this horrible sprue that, uh, flu that's spreading like wildfire, and if you catch it you're going to be in for a very rough time, and maybe if you're a bit frail or infirm it might actually kill you. Um, how do you not catch it, especially if you have to leave your house? Well. There's a couple of things you can do. So, firstly, flu is a particulate. Um, basically, most upper respiratory infections, so like the common cold is technically an upper respiratory infection because it's lots of different infectious sort of viruses that are all, you know, classed under the umbrella URI, or we just mostly call them colds. Um, upper respiratory infections and things like the flu, they're basically, or influenza, the proper word for obviously, is um, particulate threat. So what that means is that when somebody with the flu coughs, sneezes, you know, does anything like that, bodily fluids, and they've got the flu, their sort of spittle and whatever everything else will have a particulate threat in it from the virus. Now, the great news is that particle threats are very easy to stop with simply, I'd say, always recommend a P3 filter, because P3 filters are the um, highest level of protection you can get on particulate filters. So, <clears throat> obviously with a P3 filter, your risk of anything getting through the filter is very low. Whereas if you opted for the lower rating filters, then you're at more risk, if that makes sense. But, annoyingly, flu can get into your eyes. So a half-face respirator, unless you had some sort of goggles with it, would be absolutely no good. So you would need a full-face respirator. I've got my Israeli M15 here, because it's a good mask. So there we go, mask on with the filter, and that would give me total protection from uh, at least catching airborne influenza. When I breathe through, the particulate filter blocks all the bacteria getting through, and obviously by that blocking the bacteria, I can't inhale it and it can't get into my eyes because the mask is sealed to my face. So. That's how we deal with the um, actual bacteria in the air. Now, again, it all comes down to practicality. If you were somebody who had to use public transport a lot, would you really want to use a gas mask with a particulate filter or respirator with a particulate filter on it? Or would you think that might get me arrested from somebody who doesn't really know better and likes to panic whatever else, you know, stuff like that? So that's all down to you, but I'm saying to actually protect yourself fully from a particulate threat like flu, you would need a full face respiration with a particulate filter. Because you need to protect both your eyes and from inhaling it. Now I'd also recommend carrying around something like this. This is rubbing al alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Um, so this isn't any good for drinking, but it is good for cleaning the wounds and things like that. Now, you can get these in the little hand sanitizer um, bottles, which are probably the better size, but the idea is that you can spray this on door handles or keep cleaning your hands with it, you know, to prevent risk of um, picking the germ up on your hand and then eating something later, or when you've got your mask off, infecting yourself with anything that's still alive. This will obviously kill bacteria on surfaces, so you can either spray it on surfaces before you touch them, or you can spray it onto your hands and rub your hands to clean your hands. So, really, I think the main threat is if you're on public transport. Now, I'll just take the mask off a bit, because you can hear me a bit more clearly. Yeah, I think the main threat to anybody will be being on public transport, basically. Because public transport is where, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this, if you're on a train or a bus or whatever, and somebody's got a cold or anything like that, you'll hear them coughing non-stop, and you'll know that, you know, very shortly you're probably going to have what they have. That's, you know, very true. Um, when I used to work in the city, every time you'd get on a bus, if somebody had a cold, you'd hear one, at least one person coughing or sneezing or constantly. And you knew by, you know, a few days' time you were going to have whatever they had, especially if you're on a seat quite close to them. 
And then when there was really bad sort of colds and things at different periods, you might have like 10 or so different people on a bus, you know, 40, 50 seats on, sneezing and coughing. So, was, you know, no, you knew there was no way you weren't going to catch something then. Um, it obviously depends on what sort of job you do as well, how much you're going to come into contact with people and things. If you're a person that does lots of face-to-face -face interaction in your job, so you're doing retail or something like that, I think you're a bit screwed when it comes to flu. Because it, all it takes is one person with an infection to come up, stand sort of as close as I am to the camera, maybe spit a bit as they're talking and um, maybe sneeze a bit and you've caught it by that point. I don't know if flu, if, if you have a good immune system, you might not catch it in the first place because I'm not a biologist. I don't know to that degree of um, if you take multivitamins regularly, will it give you a better chance of not getting the flu? I really couldn't tell you that, but we'll see how flu spreads is fairly straightforward. If people cough, sneeze, whatever bodily fluid, particle threat that's, you know, for a few feet around them, you can catch it. Um, and obviously where it also lays on surfaces. And that's the other problem with public transport. If you've got lots of people coughing and sneezing on there, even if they're not on your bus journey, their germs are probably, you know, spread all over the um, bus and everything. I have a feeling from what I've read before that the flu virus can actually survive quite a long time just on objects. I can't remember if it was a week or something like that, but regardless... If it's something like public transport or um, a busy sort of public place, you know that the germs are just going to constantly be laying around everywhere until a week or two after the actual pandemic's properly over. So, yeah, this is just, I thought, like an interesting video to do. But if you are in a public place and you really don't want to catch it, you are going to probably have to wear a full face respirator with a decent particulate filter on it. Um, but, yeah. It's not the best thing in the world, I guess, because as I said, in some countries that might make people think there's some sort of terror threat or whatever else. But yeah, if you are in, if you are serious about not catching it, I think it's going to be inevitable if somebody who's coughing with it on a bus or something you're on that you're going to catch it unless you've got a full face respirator on. And as I said, make sure you have some kind of hand sanitizer gel or rubbing alcohol, whatever, that you can spray onto surfaces or wipe onto your hands regularly. To make sure that you're not carrying it and then going to spread it to yourself once you've de-kitted yourself. Uh, I'm not sure if flu virus can get in through cuts in the hands as well. That's not something I've really looked into too much. But it's probably best if you've got cuts on your fingers to regularly use the hand sanitizer on them anyway. Which would be good practice regardless. Because there's lots of bacteria and stuff you can just pick up on your fingers regardless if you've got cuts on them that can lead to infection. Uh, so obviously put plasters on cuts, things like that. If you're really worried, I guess you could wear latex gloves or something like that and just make sure you take them off before eating and stuff like that. But yeah, there you go. Uh, let's see how well I do personally when uh, this super flu uh, gets to my area. I've had a friend that's had what might have been it and he was ill for two or three weeks quite badly. So if that was it, then that would make sense. But like I said, I think I'm quite good in this scenario because of how many respirators I've got it's just gonna be if somebody else in my family I think comes into the house sneezing and coughing then I'm gonna get it but at least I've got my HEPA filter I can keep running in my room that will deal with a lot of particulate threats that way so stay safe everybody and I hope you're all okay